Sean in Novato, California, out there, I think that's kind of wine country, maybe? Anyway, he writes to me and he says, how is it that these teeny tiny Class D amplifiers weighing less than 10 pounds can produce all that power when called for, especially into loads like MagnaPens that are 4 ohms and require a great deal of current to drive them properly? Uh, a fact I'm not quite sure I agree with, but anyway, doesn't matter. Um, is it that these Class D amps don't actually work well into demanding speakers and it's a lot of marketing nonsense? Or is it true? Thanks, Paul. Sean. Yeah, well, it's, it's true. It's true. Um, Class D amplifiers deliver a lot of power and current in general, right? So part of what you have to know is how they actually work. And I'm going to try and show you here real quick. And we've done this before, but each time I do it, we get a little bit different perspective on it, okay? <clears throat> so one thing we need to talk about is amplifier efficiency. So a Class AB amplifier is about 50% efficient, meaning that of the power that it draws, half of it is going into heat, and the other half is going into driving your speakers. And that is because um, it's a fairly inefficient design. So if we have this amplifier, here's, here's our Class B amplifier, and we have these rails, okay? So let's, let's call this 60 volts and 60 volts. So between the two, hmm, we've got 120 volts, right? Is that better? Ah, look at that, okay. So you got a you got 120 volts across this thing. And here's your output. So <clears throat> as, as we make a signal that goes out, the transistors in here are turning, um, maybe I could, could I show this better? Instead of, I'll tell you what, let's, I don't want to get, ah. I try to keep these short because I know people's eyes start crossing. <laughs> they go, ah! Um, but let, let's just take a single transistor here for a sec. Okay, and we'll call that an NPN transistor. And then here's a resistor, and so this is minus 60, and this is plus 60. Now, this isn't actually how we would do it, but anyway. So there is a 120 volts across this thing. As we put a little signal in here, and it starts to, to rise up out here, what's happening is the current is flowing because this base is turning the transistor on. The current is starting to flow and it's gonna come out here and then here's, here's our speaker, okay. And the problem is that we're measuring, um, the, the, there's a certain amount of current going through here and a certain amount of voltage to, to where what's left over uh, is going to be turned in to heat. So we've got, oh, how can I best explain this? Um, if, if, if we have, if we're producing 60 volts, then the drop across this transistor, okay, is, is zero, okay? So if, if this is outputting 60, then this point is sitting pretty much up here. That's how it's, it's pulling up, okay? And we have very little drop across here. If we're only producing, you know, this much, then we've got, say, a 40 volt drop across this. We have a, maybe a transistor up here. Um, and according to Ohm's law, when we draw current across a voltage drop, we're going to have a lot of heat involved. So what we'd kind of like to do is have, you know, when, and, and that's what's interesting is that even though there's a lot of current, when you're all the way up here and you're producing the largest signal, you're at your most efficient point. When you're down here doing smaller signals, you're at your least efficient point. So, okay, that's probably a pretty poor explanation, but you get the idea. So what would we like to do? Well, if we could do this, um, and we'll put a resistor here just just because we will. So if 
if we were to put in a square wave here and have this outputting all the way, a big ass square wave going all the way up here to 60. This is a 60 volt square wave, right? Well, close to it. Um, there's no drop across this impedance and we can put out all the current we want. There's no drop and a lot of current across a small resistance doesn't create much heat. So if the two forms on here were all the way on and all the way off, eh, eh, then you would be at the most efficient point of this transistor. Anywhere in between, you're going to have efficiency loss and heat. So a class D amplifier is an amplifier that basically only has square waves going into it, okay? So, well, maybe let's draw it this way. These square waves are what's called pulse width modulation, okay? So there's a, there's a boy, I wanna do this simply. There's a clock going on that's going every 100,000 times a second. It's turning on and it's looking. And we could have a little tiny square wave or nothing or we could have a big long square wave. So a pulse width signal kind of looks like this. See how they're growing in size? And then the next one goes like this. Well, that's not very good. You get the idea. You see that? And that's representing this. A little bit of voltage here is this. A little bit more voltage here is that. The voltage here is rising, so this stays on longer. This is this, and this is this, and that's that, because here's our maximum voltage in this sine wave. So this looks like that at the output. So this amplifier, this class D amplifier, is either on or off. No two ways about it, right? And, and we're varying the width of the pulses. And each of these pulses, whether it's empty or full, is happening at say 100,000 times a second. We just look and we'll see, do we want, how, how high is the voltage? Big one, if it's high, a little one if it's small. And that's how we make a sine wave. Now, all we have to do, and this is what's really hard about a class D amplifier, when I say all we have to do, is we gotta filter out all this stuff all these sharp rises here, we don't want those. So the, 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 the circuit on a class D amplifier basically has this amp and it's putting out its little stuff and then it's gonna go through a filter. And this filter has got a big job to do. It has to filter out all the high frequency stuff running at 100 kilohertz, but leave all the nice stuff so we get a clean sine wave going out. And in that way, that's how a class D amplifier works. And if it has a class D switch mode power supply, which works kind of the same way, and I'm not gonna show you on that one because that uses a chopper on the input and all this. But anyway, um, you can have you know a little baby amplifier like that with, I mean, and it's putting out hundreds and hundreds of watts because it is 90 something percent efficient. It doesn't make a lot of heat. It makes a lot of noise. There's tons of trouble with radiated emissions, all kinds of stuff. These are really hard to design, but in principle, they're actually pretty simple. So hope that helps. And yes, class D amps are real. <laughs> There's no aliens. All right, I'll talk to you later. Take it easy.